fine so for hierarchical selectors so for example take an uh, example of table html table we have right which contains multiple hierarchical elements for instance let's let me create a simple table here so let me create hr we have a table right so table contains tr which is table row and the data right which is cells here each cell right and it can it can have multiple rows and multiple cells so for instance let's take this tds right let's say this table contains some three columns as such right now which contains some something like uh, we have 10 20 then 30 you have similarly let's say you have multiple rows so four rows you have right so where i can say here for instance i have 100 that's a thousand here and maybe right so this is a simple table we have right where i'll give one of the <clears throat> attribute called border as one so this is a sample table you have let let me run this and show you how it appears so now you can see this is a simple table we have where we have actually we are actually taking some values kind of some it contains three rows uh, I'm sorry, uh, three columns as such and multiple uh, data among each row. Right. So now you can see here, uh, we in this situation, right, we can have a hierarchical relation. You can see the TR is a table row, which is an immediate hierarchy of table. TD is a table data, which is um, data um, tables um, cell we have, each cell, which is the grandchild of table kind of so now in this hierarchical relation right we have multiple ways how we can actually approach for selectors let's see how uh, how we can actually work on this now first step <clears throat> we have something called space selector meaning so let's say i'm gonna give the table right so now here two ways we know that when we give hash it's an id we are referring to but we are mentioning this a uh, name just like a name as such right then which means we, I'm, I'm actually taking direct tag name so here i'm say, saying table which means as of now as we have only one table right it will actually pick this but for instance if you have multiple then this definitely you can actually go for id of this table and you can mention the table id and i'll give space td right so here what i'm saying i'm saying here that okay in this table right td which means in this table whatever tds are there right tds are not directly tagged to table it is tagged through tr but when you give space right when you give space between your tag uh, selector elements right then we it, it means that it can go to child or grandchild level two so for instance i want to change the font for instance let's say css for instance i'll say uh, font size so let's increase it to some something let's say for instance some 20 or, or 30 bx for instance right so where so here in this situation what we are doing we are just taking the uh, border one simple attribute we gave for table so that we can see all the details in a clean way so now what i'm doing i'm taking all the tds so in this tds what i'm setting for this td i'm setting the font size to 30 bx so now when i run this you will see right all the tds actually got font size because our td end of the day td is an indirect child to table so space is something which will get the indirect child. so now for instance if you have if you want to actually do stuff with direct child for instance let's say i have this tr one of the tr i'm gonna give id as for instance uh, uh, tr2 for instance right one of the two so here i can say dollar so now this time i'm gonna take id so which is tr2 space now here instead of giving space what i'll do i'll take greater than right td meaning 
immediate child right so when i said tr2 meaning i'm actually taking one of the table row and i'm saying td meaning in this specific row take the immediate child called td right and then let's say i'm going to say uh, for instance dot css let's say i'm going to add some attribute called color maybe to let's say red i want to make this as red so when i run this program you'll see that this specific row right which is mainly tr2 and the immediate child td right we are actually getting this so see you can you can get a uh, question anyways we have uh, anyways in tr there can be only td right then how does it matter so see in td i can i can create table again right so here what i can do let's say 100 is my uh, internal uh, data i have so instead of 100 maybe what i can do i can create one more table inside this i can do that so tr i have uh, let's say for instance i have td here right now this you can see it's a separate table altogether so let's say here i'm, I'm gonna give border is equal to one and then let's say this contains maybe i'll say some uh, some day which is abc and maybe some text data some xyz right and so right yep yep this can contain right end of the day when we have td right this allows us to do right to actually um, create internal any element now this table is kind of a nested table we have in this td so now when i say tr which is tr2 greater than td which means i'm looking for immediate child in this tr i also have uh, other tds also right end of the day this td is is kind of you know uh, indirectly tagged to this tr but no i don't want this i'm looking only for this td that's how it works so now when you run this program you will see anyways right in this as this td as this complete table right belongs to this td right what what we are doing we are actually making this complete tdcs to color so that's why what happens if, if complete table becomes your stuff as such that's how it works this is a cell where you are actually looking for immediate child that's how it actually works this greater than is immediate so now we have one more thing called plus what is plus so let me take uh, some div here hr for instance i have a div so this is my let's say div so before this let's say i have a span for instance i'm taking span <clears throat> call this is a span one for instance now in this way let's say i'm going to take multiple spans right and let's say for instance i have multiple spans here too before this happened. so i have span 2 span 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 where i have my div right so when you see it in browser so let's say for instance these are your spans anyways let me take some br break So that when you look at it now then let's say this is your uh, span and then you have some div and span now here for instance uh, i'm gonna take some spans here for instance uh, six seven and eight inside another div Now the, the meaning is here, let's say in this div, let's say I'm gonna give ID as let's say my div or my div one, for instance, right? So all these spans are at same tree level or tree node level for this div. But these spans are not at the same level, right? Because this is under uh, an, an, another div. Right, I, I cannot say that these spans are at same level. Right? So these spans are at same level as we are at tip. So now let's look at one more selector we have. So let me <clears throat> comment this. 
so here we have something called let's say i'm going to take my div which is i'm going to take specific div which is div1 now if you want to take any id yeah i'll be taking and then i'll say plus and i'll take span what is the meaning of plus plus meaning that get the first reference of span immediately after my d1 at a same level meaning after this div right if there is any span for instance there can be many multiple maybe i'm gonna make it maybe paragraph p right so after this div yes do i have span yes i do have is let's say i'm gonna take it as para one but yes this span is there right so what i'm doing what i'm taking here after this element immediate element let's say you want to take uh, immediate one element then you go for plus this is something which gets the first reference right after your immediate element right with this tag now here you can give anything you can give tag name you can give id anything you want now for instance here i want to uh, perform something for instance here i want to perform uh, let's say css of uh, let's take something like a background color maybe background <coughs> color uh, let's say let me take it as yellow he is the one which i want so see what happens so when i run this program you will see that after this div right uh, we have a span called span 5 what is happening here why it is not taking background color css i'm taking div 1 plus span here meaning i'm taking the span to css background color to yellow yep so here you have a div which is my div one we have taken and then plus span so after this you have span immediate span so when i run this program so after this paragraph it should actually take the span it's not taking y so so let's say if it is span here or let me just look at it is there something i'm missing so my d1 plus i'm taking after my d1 i'm taking any css which is when tag which is uh, <coughs> And I'm gonna add CSS to this each span one span which I'm getting this is a span and then so let me just change this maybe so maybe I'll just set some color maybe I'm missing the attribute maybe can happen So let's debug it once. Let me go to developer tools here. My document dot ready. So when I refresh, you will get it. Yep, you are actually getting the CSS of my view, right? And uh, and you actually setting your CSS with color attribute. So color is undefined. This should work. Let's refresh it again. <clears throat> so here I have my my div one, 
which as yes, I do have my D1 here okay let me do one one thing at a time so let's say before this I want to change my D1 CSS first right dot CSS <clears throat> to something like uh, background color to maybe yellow I'm gonna change first the D1 let's see what is yep you can see this is happening this color is changing so after div plus span right it should take the immediate span here so it's fine I mean it's not taking span let's look at it okay it is taking now so seems the it was it was actually when I'm using your tag here right then it was there was a problem that's fine so let me make this background color <clears throat> of an immediate span to yellow and let me let me make this as green for instance so now you can see when I run this program right so the immediate span will be uh, will actually handle with plus so for instance let's let's do one simple POC let's say immediately I have my paragraph and then I am taking my span so when I run this program now now you'll see okay it is taking now this should be immediate when you are using plus meaning it will take the immediate reference but plus should take the first reference of um, the element whatever we are looking and then it should actually um, do it anyways so if I'm taking span here when I run this then it is taking the immediate element and then it is actually fine so this is something which is which plus does similarly if you use nego symbol right in place of plus meaning it means all spans at the same level of d1 right set whatever you are doing so let me run this and show so when you see here you can see at the same level as i said when i go back here these these are the two spans which are at same level of div and remaining spans are not at same level so when you are actually using this nego which means here you are getting all the spans you are looking for right so that's how you can actually make so if you want to set multiple things for this right then you can actually go ahead and again do for each right so here when i say when i'm setting up direct uh, step here which means i'm setting up this for uh, all the spans at a time yes you can always do this in different way that you gonna you want to loop on right and then set your data so here what do you want to do for instance first thing is you want to set this when I say this meaning whatever elements I'm looking for which means I want all the spans right so for each whenever I'm looking this meaning whatever span is coming first dot CSS maybe I'm setting this similarly what I'll do I'll actually set some font also for instance dot CSS again sorry CSS of let's say font hyphen size comma some 30 so here if you want to you know perform some action on this right yes you can do it in this way so now when you take it now what you're doing so your background color is set and your font size 30 sorry you have to give px right my mistake so let me run this i will see yeah so when you're taking your uh, nego symbol then it will actually get all the um <clears throat> all the elements with uh, span right with span and it will actually um check this uh, stuff. so this is how we, we take the, uh, the we take the hierarchical now now this is kind of hierarchical now where we are taking it in the same level we are saying right so that's how we perform or we actually get the elements um, based on my uh, DOM here now in my I'm actually going from div I'm actually getting other steps this is what we have in hierarchy the next one which is very important is the index filters let's see 
how we can actually create a selector right based on some you know uh, filters right and filters traverse through some indices let's see that part so let me create a new html page um, for that let me save it uh, let me open the containing folder let me take this So I'll say selector selector two.html. Perfect. So here, what we're gonna do now? Let's look at it. Um, so let's say let's say I'm gonna take my, some paragraphs here. So let's say this is uh, para one, right? So here. Uh, we know that uh, whenever we create a HTML document, right, each and every control will be arranged as an index, right? Mm -hmm. End of the day, whatever controls, uh, uh, elements, HTML elements you are actually arranging, right, everything will get arranged in a form of index within, right, which they are like, you know, they are actually arranged as an uh, DOM objects inside a document, right? So let's say I'm taking para 1, para 2, para 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, for instance. Now, under uh, this, uh, for instance, the body tag, what is happening here is, whenever I take all para, um, paragraph elements, for instance, all the elements will be taken in one shot and they'll be considered or arranged in a form of index. And we are going to take the advantage of that index to perform some operations. Let's see that part. So let me copy um, this script because jQuery script is important reference. And then let's give our own, let's write our own script. Now first up, so initially let's make sure that document.ready is there. So whatever we want to do, we want to do after the document is ready. Simple as that. Before that, we don't want to take up any now, so once the complete document is ready, which means once the complete DOM elements are created, right, then what we're going to do, let's take all paragraphs in. So. so how can I take all paragraphs? It's simple selector, just give P. Now this will get all um, paras, right? Paras we need. Now in this, let's see how we can actually have a filter. So here, we have seen, um, um, you know, uh, multiple combinations of, uh, uh, you know, uh, tags or uh, labels or names we can actually use or element name we can use or element or tag name we can use, which is multiple combinations of different things. But here we're going to use something called filter, meaning fine. I'm taking P, meaning I'm taking all paragraphs here. And in that paragraphs, what do you need? Now here, this is a, a beauty here. Now, when I, when I say, for instance, first, right? So, for instance, I'm going to say first, meaning among all paragraphs, it will pick the first one, which is the first, meaning the zeroth index one, and then that element will be written here. So, to that element, let's do something. Let's um, let's set some CSS maybe again. Uh, to, for instance, let's say I'm going to set some color. Right to red, for instance. Yeah. yeah, let's make it first. So let's run this. Sorry. So let's uh, run this. You can see this is parallel. Right. Now, here you can see I'm taking all parallels, and among I'm using a filter called first. I need to pick the first one. Similarly, you have, let's say, same stuff. I'm going to take last. Here in browser, you will see it will be the last one. So, in the collection of paras, I'm saying it will pick the last. Similarly, for instance, I have, let's say, even. Now you can see that, right? Zero. When I say even, it it will take the even index numbers. Zero, 
2, 4 and 6. That's our even index numbers and it will pick that element and it will perform whatever operation we are actually performing. Similarly, you have odd. It will pick odd index numbers and it will actually perform the action here. That's our even and odd. Now here, see, when we say first it will pick zeroth index, last will be um, your, your uh, count minus one. And your even will uh, will be all even uh, indices and odd will be all odd indices. Now let's see if you want to work with specific index, then yes, we can work. For instance, here we have something called equal EQ. So for instance, I'm going to give something called three. Meaning I'm saying, okay, get all my all the paragraph elements. And among them, what I want, I am looking for a third index one, which means 0, 1, 2, and 3, which means this is para 4, for instance. So now when I right click on run this, you will see para 4 will be highlighted. But this element is the one which we are actually selecting. That's for equal. Right? Now one more we have is, let's say, less than LT, meaning less than which index? For instance, I'm going to take 4. So what? when i want all paragraphs less than index 4 right meaning let me run this first see here 0 1 2 3 4 this is the fourth index paragraph so before this less than that meaning all the elements which are less than the fourth index i want i want the elements yeah this will give you collection of these things. similarly you have one more to get greater than gt let's say gt of for instance i'm going to give some uh, six sixth index let me run this so here you can see zero one two three four five six and then we have one element here so this element will be picked right so this is how the filter can be actually um, applied on index because index when you are getting collection right what it will do see when i when i say we are actually taking collections right for instance um let's say for instance if i give this as for instance three but when i run this you will see that it is taking till here after three it is taking now what i'm going to do I'll, I'll place these last two in a div right and let me run this right you'll see you'll see the same output why end of the day if i don't give any context right here i'm not saying that okay don't take uh, any paragraph which is within this div or no i'm not even talking about that what i'm saying take all piece that's it what it will do in this document it will pick each and every uh, paragraph and whatever in this sequence right in this flow whatever paragraph it actually finds out first will be the zeroth index and so on that's how it works right so this is how it actually picks up and then it actually gives up the shots right? so this is how the actual um, you know uh, index uh, we can actually apply filters based on indices right? similarly we have one more uh, filter called visibility filter so visibility meaning sometimes we create uh, some hidden uh, tags, right? So based on the hidden tags, right? So hidden tags will not be uh, rendered rendered on uh, on on, a, on browser because they will be uh, actually hidden. Let me just show you uh, some of them. So let me just take um, comment this out and let's take some hr here so let's take so I, I can actually use this one itself paragraph itself and let's say here so here let's say para 3 i'm going to make style is equal to i'll say i have something called display and i'll say none meaning it's i'm actually blocking the visibility here let's make this for six maybe 
and eight visible. So here among this eight paras, right, I have um, visible, some visible and some hidden. So if you want to get those elements, specific elements, yes, we have the visibility filter. How? Let's let me show you. Now here again, what what do I need? All piece, right? All paragraphs which are visible. Fine. So this is what I want. So let's let's. Um, anyways, if whatever are hidden, right? Anyways, we can't see, right? So what I'll do, I'll actually try to get the length. For instance, let's take alert dot length. So this will give me whatever paragraphs are visible. I'll get the length of them. So let me just run and you'll see five. Right? Because among eight paragraphs, right, three are uh, um, um, hidden and you'll see five. Okay. That's how it is. Right? Similarly, if you want to get uh, the hidden ones, right? So let's say I'm going to take same. Let me keep this length and let me go for hidden. Let me run this. You will see five are visible, three are hidden. That's how it is. So this is a visibility filter. If you want to, you know, select any right based on um, your visibility, then you can always go for. Um, you can always go for uh, visibility based on attacks. Yes, this is a filter. End of the day, you're using filter right based on visibility or index. That's how we use. If you are using index, that's how index filters. If you are using filters for visibility, then you can go for this. Product. That's how we can actually do. Uh, so, so end of the day, we are actually still learning. See, you can see that no selectors is something which is very important. Based on selectors, right? You, we can actually do anything, any uh, possible thing, right? On DOM manipulation, right? End of the day, we have to actually get the right set of elements to perform action right anyways to perform action multiple things we're gonna see we're gonna actually see uh, the traverses and everything but your select cards are important basically right and then we have a next type of selectors called form selectors right form selectors meaning um until now we have seen all the elements which are like you know um like tips or uh, we have seen some for uh, um, you know, paragraphs or you know different things. So now let's see uh, specific to form selectors meaning. Uh, let's take one tag called input tag, right? So in input tag we have multiple types, right? So using these filters, right, we can actually uh, select the input tag, direct input tags with multiple filters actually. So let's let's. Let me show you one quick example here. So let me take a new HTML and let me save it to uh, selector three or HTML. So here I'll take the jQuery reference API and I'll keep the script ready. And here let me take some inputs here. So let's say input I have text, right? And then let me call it as a uh, text as D1 is my text. Right now, let's say this text as I have some three T2 and T3 for instance. Similarly, for instance, I have one more input tag called um, let me take a uh, checkbox, let's say, right? Name for instance, I have C1 for instance. Now, this checkbox for instance uh, is let's say uh, apple for instance i'm just taking some checkbox name and this checkbox is checked right check meaning it is um selected as such right so let me take uh, same checkbox instance some three more and this checkbox i'm not i'm taking it as uh, maybe i'll take it as hotnet checkbox right where so these checkboxes across will be separate right this so let me call it as c1 c2 and c3 they are unique checkboxes as such they have nothing to do with uh, each other as such right 
so and then the last one let's say i'm going to take something like um some some elements i'm taking yes. so for instance this is checked and for instance uh, and uh, disabled for instance and let me take some more. i'm taking multiple combinations right so that i can show you uh, disabled is equal to disabled let's say this is for instance js right let's check box here so here we have a, a chart let's take we have this and then let's have some more input we have many types right let's me take let me take a radio r1 right And let's say this is checked is equal to checked. And let's say this is radio. Let's say I'll take some colors red. And then I have the same stuff again. Let me remove this check. And name should be same, right? We know that. Name should be same so that they will be tagged to each other. Let's say red, blue, and green, for instance. And for instance, here let me take this as disabled as disabled. Perfect. Now, anyways, we have these three different uh, sets of input types text, checkbox, and radio. And we can take many. I mean, you can take button, right? Or any type here actually. So now let's see um, uh, some of the selectors. So let me take dollar document. I want document to be ready first before we do anything perfect so now in this what I'll do I'll take input tag input right so let's first get the length of alert for instance length of this input. so when I say input meaning it will give me all the input tag collection length right so you can see here there are three text some four checkbox and three radios kind of right so when i run this program you'll see it will give me 10. the three text checkboxes and right so now let's go one step ahead i'll comment each one because anyways, when, when I share this code, right, you'll have this, right? But I'll, let's let's uh, give the output only one because as we go on, we'll be performing many. So you'll get confused with uh, there are many pop-ups, right? So I'll say alert. Now let's go one step ahead. So in input, for instance, I want text type. I want the collection of text type only. Yeah. When I run this, you'll see it will give you three. There are one, two, and three different text types. Perfect. Similarly, if you want, let's say here itself, let's say for example, checkbox. Yes, you can get it. When I run this, you'll see there are four checkbox elements you have. There are four. Right? Now, similarly, you can go for radio. Now, in checkbox, for instance, you want to get multiple attributes again. In checkbox, let's say, you want to get checked state. You can again go for a multiple filter. This is the beauty here. So, till now, we have seen single level of filter, right? Where we have seen paragraphs and then, for instance, um, uh, visibility and um, based on uh, index and all. But here, what we are doing, we are saying input, perfect, type checkbox, and then I want only check ones in check box I want check meaning you can see here how many are checked you have one which is Apple one and then this one is also checked anyways this is disabled anyways let me make it disabled okay but end of the day checked are two one and two let's run this right click and say view in browser we'll see two perfect your JS and Angular are uh, sorry Apple and Angular are checked but if I take only checked, then 
you see how many are checked again these two are checked but in radio one more is checked so when i run this you will see right see here you will actually see this three why because one two and three these three are checked that's how you will get your checked ones similarly if you want disabled for example yes we can get it disabled across your inputs i'm saying any input because disabled is a common attribute of multiple input types right so now you can see this one two these two are disabled here and one is in radio so when i run this program we'll see we'll get three but for instance you want to check disabled only in radio type yep you can always do it for instance i'm going to take for instance here i'm going radio let me run then check you can see it will give you one yeah end of the day it will try to you know take all the filters on what type actually you are looking for and then it will give you simple as that right so this is how we normally get uh, details but here for instance you have a um, you have one of the input type for instance uh, input type uh, let me take color for instance right this is one of the type we have which is the latest html5 element we have so now let's try with try with that which means i am looking for something called color dot length now when i run this right you'll see right oh sorry my mistake i'm looking for input color not color it will give me color type type of tag but that is not what we need right let me run this we'll see it says unsupported pseudo color so the html5 elements input type elements are not supported for this uh, for actually reading through the filter so only html4 uh, elements will be um, selected so kind of you can have text type you can have password type you can have a checkbox uh radio in which you have you can have button right you can have image type that can be selected right uh, you can have hidden uh, one hidden type you can have file input right or uh, uh you can have button yeah submit you have right so these for these type of inputs yes you can perform your selectors basically right where you can get multiple filters right and you can actually get the collection of elements whatever you are actually looking for this is how we normally do the selectors for inputs basically right so now let's look into one more element called select select uh, we have uh, used select for either drop down you can use or multi drop down kind of list box let's see here um, kind of the complex one which is list box where i want the list of or or whatever are selected we have seen this in our javascript right whatever are selected how to retrieve it we have seen it in javascript right uh, on 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 uh, selection right or, or on change what we have done we have actually taken it into a javascript function and we have looped on all the elements and we have changed but here let's see the beauty here how quick we can actually do that using uh, this and uh, and let's see the selector this time i'm not going to take id this time we'll actually go with the name of element element name we'll say how to get it using name something new we're going to learn so now let me create a new uh, html page let me call it as selector4.html so here let me take a simple select so here let me take a name right uh let me give some name of this uh, maybe i'll say i'll take movies kind of right and let me give some movie options for example let's say uh i'm going to give some 300 movie so for instance i'm going to give some some uh movies let's say uh let's say ph kind of pursuit of happiness for instance it's something right so i'll give let's say avenger for instance 
the 21 number is times right right um, for instance yeah so, but yeah perfect now we have some right let me just few more so that we can have multiple selected words right mm, let's see I'm coloring something here so these are the options see in option right if i don't give value so what happens automatically whatever text we gave will be set to value itself so now what we're going to do here now this is my select where i'm going to say multiple as i'll take it as multiple meaning i can select multiple elements right so when i run this right you'll see that i can actually select multiple when i click on uh, control i can select and i'll select multiple stuffs right so now among these what i want to do i want to get the selected ones so a collection of selected options in my select named movies for instance right so now let's see this so here i'm going to take my document first so that after document is ready only i'll touch my stuff so here perfect now i want to read what i want to read i want to read the select element but I, I haven't given any id here I, I i didn't want it to give but because i want to give only with a name now how to read it with name so you have something called um, attribute type i'm going to give the tag name and in this you can mention yeah what with what attribute you want to select i want to select using name and name is nothing but your movies now this will select this element simple now what i want to do i want to actually use a change option right because whenever a selection changes in this select uh, element i want to perform some action so let's perform let's take a function first and now let's come back now perfect now whenever it changes yep whenever i change now i have a uh, this event will be raised and it will come to this now what to do so now here let's see how many elements are selected first let's get the count of element selected now how to get it so i'll say dollar right <clears throat> sorry so in this select what is that we are, will get we'll get option right we'll get option right in this so in these options filter is selected right i want to get the selected ones for instance if you want to keep keep few selected for instance i want to keep this ph as selected selected for one one minimum one selected for instance right so here as soon as i say option dot selected and from which option maybe i can have one more uh, see i can have multiple selects right but i want to make sure the context is set in a right way so i'll say this when i say comma this definitely it will take the current context and what is the current context this is the select movies context perfect now I'll say dot length. Yep, I want to get the length of or, or number of options selected in this uh, movies list box. Let me run this. So when I click on 300, one perfect. When I click on this, two, yeah, click on pH, three. Let's say I, I unselect 300. You'll see two. Perfect. So whatever are selected, you can see in one shot, we are actually getting it. That's the beauty of jQuery, right? And in this, for instance, I want to print them. Let's say I'm going to take a div here uh, with the ID called maybe my data is a div. So what I want to do, I want to actually print the selected movies right here. So what I'll do here, yep, I got the length, how many are selected, perfect. So here I'll take a simple variable called uh, some some variable count or, or, or selected movies maybe. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to loop on. Now how to loop again? Yes, I, I'm going to take option selected, right? When I say option selected, it will give me all the 
uh, all the elements, all options, whatever are selected, right? And in which I'm going to do each. So when I perform this each, what I'm going to do here, right? I'll take the value of each. So I'll take this uh, variable plus is equal to so dollar. Now what is it I'm getting? I'm getting option. I'll just say this because I know that option is is a is is a individual element I have. I don't have any hierarchical uh, elements. I'll just say this dot value. Value you can say that simple. And then give some space here for it. Now it loop on and it will give me all the options and their values. For instance, if I select, for instance, 300 and Avenger side, for instance, that will give me this. So now, once you are done with this, now you are you are ready with this uh, text. Uh, sorry, this variable will be appended with all the movie selected. And now, let me print this into my document dot into my div, and the div ID is my data dot in HTML. Yeah, end of the day, it's JavaScript, right? Select this one. So, perfect. So, now let's go ahead and see. Right click and save view in browser. Now, you'll see that's a 300. Yes, one selected, and you'll see 300. Click on Avengers. Now, you'll see Avengers. Let me just remove this alert for, for, for now. And let me refresh it. Oops. Let me run this. So now I'll say 300 Avengers PH, right? I'll select maybe LOR kind of. Let's say if I unselect anything, let's say I'll insert 300. Now you'll see, right? It will give me the true um, elements, whatever got selected as such, right? All the elements, whatever are actually selected, right? It will give me all the elements collection. Whatever. The powerful selector we have, right? Using which we can actually get the complete set of elements whatever we are actually looking for so this is something um, which we have in uh, form sector basically and and the filters which we normally use and how we we can actually apply the option selection on the select element so this is what we have for uh, today's class guys we'll actually meet up in next class and we'll see more and we're going to start with traversals very interesting topic right and we'll see the traversals and we'll actually go with the other uh, concepts thank you